Hello and welcome back to this new video on Stokes theorem. So let's take a look at the statement of Stokes theorem. It's saying that the closed integral f dot dr which is taken over a closed curve is equals to the double integral taken over the open surface which that particular closed curve has bounded and it's uh, the double integral is working on curl f dot n cap where n cap is the unit normal vector at any point on this particular surface s drawn in a sense in which a right handed screw would advance when rotated in the direction of c that means if we rotate around the direction of c and if i take a right handed screw then the direction in which the screw would advance that's the direction of n cap okay so this being the statement let's quickly take a look at one of the problems it's saying that we need to verify stokes theorem for this particular given function vector function where s is the upper surface of the sphere where the sphere is given by something like this that means upper surface of the sphere means we are dealing with a hemisphere okay and c is basically the boundary of that hemisphere so let's take a look at the hemisphere so this is the hemisphere that we have you can see this is the upper part of the hemisphere and this is the boundary as you can see this is the boundary of the hemisphere that means this is the c boundary this boundary is represented by c and we have to take the c boundary in a sense that if a right handed screw would rotate in that direction in the direction in which uh, it would advance that would be the direction of n cap so you can uh, assume that here the direction must be something like this the way i am moving my hand then if I move it in this manner then the right handed screw that would advance inside the uh, blackboard so that means if I just assume that if I keep my hemisphere in this way so you can compare that this is basically the hemisphere that I have over here in my hand and you can see on the board so if I take it in a way that the c um, the c curve it's we are moving along the c curve in this particular direction okay if you follow my finger in this particular direction then it would advance in the direction of this green line which i can assume is the z axis okay if this is the x axis the y axis this is the z axis then a right handed screw would advance in this direction now there is another way we can understand the direction of n cap that is if someone is walking around along the boundary of the c surface okay imagine that someone is walking along the boundary along this surface in such a manner that the surface should be always on his left side okay so i'll be walking in such a way that the surface is always on my left side and the direction in which I need to walk by keeping the surface on my left, left side that should be the direction of the C okay the direction in which we are taking C and now if a screw uh, moves in that particular sense the way it would advance that's the direction of n cap so you can understand in this particular case n cap is this direction but not always like this if i take a point on the s surface is the s surface on the s surface if i take a point over here then the n cap would be in this direction okay something like this okay so the n cap direction is perpendicular to the surface and upwards not downwards okay so coming back to the problem this is our hemisphere and we are moving in this particular sense then the screw is advancing in the direction of z axis that means upwards but obviously perpendicular to it that means uh, if i take any particular uh, point on the surface s then the in cap direction is something like that which is towards the direction of z axis that means upwards but obviously perpendicular to the particular surface okay so we need to figure out what our n cap is but before that let's first find out curl of f okay. so curl would be determinant i cap j cap k cap del del x del del y del del z taken uh, and now we need to take the coefficients of the f uh, vector so that would be 2x minus y minus y z square and minus y square z so if we just break up the determinant 
so i cap when i'm breaking i'm having a del del y of minus y square z and that would be minus 2yz minus of del del z of minus yz square so that would be uh, a plus of um, 2yz right so basically they'll just cancel up and become zero minus j cap okay so now if i expand along the j cap then i'll be having del del x of this uh, variable that would be zero and del del z of 2x minus y that would be again zero okay so plus k cap of del del x of minus yz square that would be zero and minus of del del y of 2x minus y that would be again a minus one so minus and minus it will become plus so we are simply having k cap as our curl of f okay so we have the curl f value and that's k cap now let's try to find out the n cap value okay so we already know that if we are trying to find out a unit normal perpendicular to a surface then if the surface equation is given by let's say g is some function of xyz if this is the particular surface then we know that n cap is grad g by modulus of grad g right that's the way it is done um, so now grad of g would be uh, <coughs> we know that grad function is nothing but i cap del del x plus j cap del del y plus k cap del del z and my g function which is a surface the equation of the surface of the hemisphere that's basically given by x square plus y square plus z square we have equals to one so i'll bring the one on the left hand side so it will be minus one equals zero so that's the equation of the surface of the hemisphere so grad of g that would be del del x of this value del del x of this value is nothing but 2x so i'll be having i cap 2x plus j cap del del y of again the same function that would be a 2y so 2y and similarly k cap of 2z right divided by modulus of this vector quantity modulus of this vector would be root over of 4x square plus 4y square plus 4z square so you can just visibly see that the 2 and the 4s inside the root over will simply cancel out and here in the denominator i have x square plus y square plus z square and i know that the value of x square plus y square plus z square is nothing but 1 if i take the 1 on the right hand side so the denominator value is becoming 1 so all i have is x i cap y j cap plus z k cap okay so that's my unit normal vector okay now we know that using stokes theorem we need to find out this value curl f dot n cap ds and we have got the values to be curl f value is k cap dot in cap value is x i y j and z k cap d s so it is better to take a substitution x equals r cos theta and y equals r sin theta now in this case when z equals to zero okay when z equals to zero that means along the c boundary on along the c boundary the z value is zero so z value is zero and in that case the value of x square plus y square plus z square equals to 1 if i substitute z equals to 0 it becomes x square plus y square equals to 1 and that's a circle having radius 1 so in place of r i'm going to take simply 1 so no need to write so i'm having the substitution x equals to cos theta and y equals to sin theta i'm going to make that substitution here and uh, the z value that's simply going to range from 0 to the total height of the hemisphere which is nothing but 1 so z is going to range from 0 to 1 and x and y i am taking this substitution where obviously the theta is going to range from since it's a hemisphere a total round figure so from 0 to 2 pi okay 
so i'll come back to the problem now if i try to make these substitutions uh, k cap dot uh, k cap that will be one so all i will be having is z and in place of dx i want to write d theta and dz because those are my variables now and obviously when i'm making a substitution i need to think about the uh, limits okay right how the limits are going to change so here you can understand that the z limit is going to vary from as you can see 0 to 1 so the z limit is going to vary from 0 to 1 and the theta limit is going to vary from 0 to 2 pi and in a multiple integral whenever we take a substitution you need to keep in mind the jacobian right the jacobian value the jacobian value if we take x equals to r cos theta and x equals to r sin theta then the jacobian or the mod jacobian value is nothing but r and in this case we have taken r to be equals to 1 so that means my jacobian value is also 1 so i just need to multiply a 1 which is the jacobian value since i am making a substitution in a multiple integral so it doesn't make any uh, change over here in this case so first of all i'll do the integration with respect to theta and then with respect to z z equals 0 to 1 uh, z is not dependent on theta so i'll simply have z times the upper limit which is 2 pi dz and 2 pi z square by 2 0 to 1 and that's going to be 2 pi times half and that's just simply pi so that's the value using the right hand side or the double integration in the stokes theorem now we need to verify stokes theorem here so we need to do the left hand side also where we will have to do the integration along the curve c the closed integral along the curve c and try to get the same answer which is pi okay so let's now start with the other part of stokes theorem which is the closed integral f dot dr so that's the f vector dot dr now i'm taking dr as dx i cap plus dy j cap plus dz k cap okay so that's my uh, close integration so if i just uh, do the corresponding multiplications then i'll be having 2x minus y dx and minus yz square dy minus y square z of dz so that's the integration i need to do along the curve c so now how do we proceed with this kind of integration along the curve c we know that the equation of c c is nothing but a circular base of the hemisphere that means x square plus y square equals 1 and the value of z is particularly 0 so we can again make a trigonometric substitution here or we can do any way that we are comfortable with so i'll just make the substitution that would make the problem easy so obviously i'll take x equals to cos theta and y equals to sine theta so this would definitely satisfy that circle so if i take if i put x as cos theta then it's going to be 2 cos theta minus y that's going to be sine theta and dx from this line obviously you can understand that dx value is going to be uh, minus sine theta times d theta so minus sine theta d theta right so that's the first part we have got and obviously theta is going to vary from 0 to 2 pi minus coming to the second part yz square right so value of z is definitely zero along where the c curve is lying the value of z is zero so if i just put the value z equals zero over here and over here so you can understand the two and the second and the third integrations they are becoming zero so i just don't need to write them anymore okay 
which is so if i now proceed with this particular calculation uh, if i multiply it's going to be theta from 0 to 2 pi i'll have 2 cos theta times sin minus of sin theta that's going to be 2 sin theta cos theta that's sin 2 theta so a minus common outside sin 2 theta that's our first integration and minus minus it will become a plus theta from 0 to 2 pi sin square theta d theta so we can adjust the second integration with a half outside and a 2 inside so this first integration is going to be uh, the minus is going to become plus cos 2 theta by 2 and theta from 0 to 2 pi and in the second case 2 sin square theta that's going to be 1 minus cos 2 theta 0 to 2 pi d theta so if i put the limits in the first part cos of 4 pi cos of 4 pi that's going to be simply 1 so i'll be having half minus cos 0 that's again 1 so minus another half and that's becoming completely 0 plus half theta uh, minus sine 2 theta by 2 theta from 0 to 2 pi so half if i put 2 pi in place of theta that's going to be a 2 pi minus in place of theta if i put 2 pi so sine 4 pi that's going to be 0 so minus 0 that's the upper limit minus if i put the lower limit then both the values are going to be 0 nothing to worry about that so it's going to be ultimately again pi which is nothing but the previous value that we have already got and hence stokes theorem has been verified okay so i hope this video is helpful to you thank you keep watching